Good morning and welcome to Morning Scoop for Friday, September 17th. This is your Daily Buckeye Fix. I'm Tom Orr. The Tulsa game is in one day, the game against Michigan in 71 days. That Tulsa game has a lot more intrigue than you probably expected at the start of the year. After the 35-28 to loss last weekend to Oregon, there are a lot of big questions still to be answered, especially about Ohio State's defense. Today, you're going to hear directly from the Buckeyes, starting with head coach Ryan Day, about how they're going to address the issues that came up last weekend. The first answer, I'm going to warn you in advance, is not a satisfying one. Day said he has not yet decided who is going to call the defensive plays, but he said there will likely be changes in which coaches are in the the box or on the field. So given that, what does he still have to figure out? Here's what he had to say around lunchtime on Thursday. Every situation is different. I think that what we have to do is try to figure out what what makes the the best sense for us in terms of, um, you know, organizing um, the game plan and then calling the game on Saturday. And that's all that we're focused on right now. Uh, We can't worry about feelings. We can't worry about anything other than giving our guys the best situation to be successful. And that's what I'm trying to figure out. So the question of who is upstairs, who is downstairs in terms of the assistant coaches, that seems like a relatively minor thing if you aren't like super involved in football, but it can make a very big difference. There is a reason after all that coaches, when they're reviewing film, watch the all 22 film from the eye in the sky, as opposed to watching a sideline angle. So Kerry Combs has always been on the sideline this year. And since he's been the defensive coordinator for Ohio state. So what would it mean to have him go up to the box bring someone downstairs do you bring someone to send someone else upstairs to, if, if you're going to have someone else be the play caller on defense how do they decide who is in the box and who is downstairs you know how do we uh, you know put the best the team in best position to call the right uh, defense uh, for what we're seeing uh, but also identifying what's happening um, you know in game so usually you know you have somebody who's looking at the back end somebody who's looking at the front and say okay what kind of schemes are we getting in the run game and then what's going on in the back end in terms of coverage and how they're trying to attack us in the pass game. And so that information has to get filtered down to the field. And then we have to get those things to the sideline to our players and then make adjustments. And that's the bottom line. I mean, that's not brain surgery, but that's just what it is. And so, um, you know, figuring out, figuring that out as we head into Saturday is, is what we've been focused on all week. So in addition to the defensive coaching questions, one of the other big questions this, this week is how is Ohio state going to respond to a loss? They have not had to play a game following a loss within a season and since 2018. That was the Purdue game. That's the last time they had to kind of circle the wagons after a loss. And they had a bye week the week after that one. So this is the first time since 2017 that they've had to lose a game and then play the next week. That is all new ground for virtually everyone involved with the program at this point. So how has the team actually responded this week? I, I thought the energy of practice has been very good. Uh, I've had uh, a few... Um, you know, group meetings and, and uh, it's, it's been good. And I think that, um, you know, the energy has been good, but now we've got to go put it on the field and it's not going to be something that just gets fixed overnight. I think the guys understand that. Uh, and we have to get out there with a bunch of energy and play aggressive, do a great job tackling this week. And, and then we build it from there. Um, and, and I think a lot of it has to do with confidence as well. So uh, it started off so far on, on Tuesday and Wednesday with a lot of juice. we got to come back today with a really good practice, but uh, you know, we'll find out what we got on Saturday. I mean, it's all about preparation. And then our test is when we get on the field and being a competitive excellence. So, um, you know, that's, that's what we're working towards right now. And I think so far um, there's been some positive uh, practices and, you know, guys have been um, working at it. I think there's been some toughness. I think there's been a little bit of edge. I think guys have been grinding on each other a little bit, a little bit of friction is good. Um, certainly after coming off of a loss like that. One of the things Day brought up in the wake of the loss to Oregon last weekend was that the Ohio State offense needed to have more balance. They were not able to run the ball when they wanted to run the ball. He said, in fact, he probably got away from the run a little too early towards the end of the game. But can they use something other than just running the ball straight ahead? Can they use those like long handoff passes where you're kind of throwing it way out to a wide receiver wide to sort of supplement the run game? Here's what they had to say about that. When you are into you know third down situations, short yardage situations for us last week, fourth down situations, um, and then when you get into the red zone, I mean, you have to be able to run the football, period. Um, and, and then it also helps you control the game. But there are also ways that we just want to get the ball in space to our playmakers. I think that's maybe what Garrett was referring to. Um, and we've done that a decent amount. You know, I think that when you look at some of our run game, um, you know, it happened a little bit in 18. I think that, you know, on offense, when we, um, you know, were throwing the ball in a perimeter, when they would load the box up, 
uh, with Dwayne, you know, you saw a lot of those bubble screens. That was a big part. I think we had over five or 600 yards on bubble screens that year. Um, you know, we are throwing the ball in the perimeter a little bit more this season. And, uh, you know, we consider that part of the run game. But, but that's, that's another conversation. Yet the other part of it is, you know, we, when it's time to run the football, we need to run the football. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll do, do that by any means necessary. Different personnel groupings, different schemes, using the quarterback. Uh, but we have to be able to do that, have the balance. Um, because when we're, when we're balanced, then, then we're, we're dangerous. Um, and, uh, and we weren't balanced enough on Saturday. In addition to the loss in the standings, the Buckeyes also suffered a pretty significant loss on the uh, and the roster as well. Safety Josh Proctor, who has been the starting free safety, he is out for the season with a pretty serious leg injury. That is a major, major hole in what is already a somewhat shaky Ohio State secondary right now. So Ryan Day was asked, how are you going to plug that hole? Can you just keep Bryson Shaw there? Or are you going to have to move someone else there? How, how are you planning to deal with that hole? Uh, Bryson obviously is, is a guy that we have. You know, Marcus Hooker's there. Uh, we've also looked at Ryan Watts, maybe also playing some safety position. Um, you know, for us, uh, Court Williams. You know, so we have a couple of that, couple of guys in there that we're considering um, because this is going to have to be a long term fix. There were a myriad of issues on defense for Ohio State last weekend. They was asked, you know, when you went back and rewatched the film, did you see guys were they just not getting lined up in time? Were they too hesitant on defense? Like what, what issues did you see when you watched the film? Uh, you know, for the most part, I, I thought we did get lined up. Um, I, I did see a little bit of hesitancy at times um, and just not, not getting the job done. Um, just not, yeah. you know, fitting a run or getting the guy down or, or executing the defense. Uh, but I also saw some situations where uh, we didn't adjust uh, properly and we didn't adjust fast enough. And because of that, we, you know, we got hit on, on the same play multiple times. And so, again, you know, there's, there's a lot to it. It's not just one thing, uh, but there was a lot of things that we looked at this week for sure. The struggles on Ohio State's defense are not completely unexpected. This is, of course, a very young defense. While most teams across the nation have maybe the most veteran teams in the history of their programs because of the extra year of eligibility granted by the NCAA in the wake of the COVID pandemic, Ohio State lost a ton of talent to the NFL. So they have a lot of new starters, a lot of young players, so is this, you know, the struggles that Ohio State's defense has had, is that kind of just a result of just having a young defense? I think it's a great question, uh, but nobody cares, you know what I mean, whether we're young or not. That's just the way it goes here. So uh, we, we can't have patience. We have to have urgency. And uh, there are going to be growing pains along the way, uh, but we have to manage that as coaches and, and figure that out and not expose them. But to your point, I think that, you know, some of these guys are getting some really valuable experience, valuable experience that they didn't get last year. And for a lot of these young guys, it's going to pay off big, you know, down the road here. Um, but along the way, we can't be losing games. Um, so we got to get it figured out and have that urgency and get those guys on the field and keep learning from it. Um, really talk about three things. You prepare for the game, you compete during the game, and then you learn from the game. And, uh, and we learned a lot from last week. And now we're preparing uh, to this Saturday and the, the new test will be this week. We also got a chance to talk to some Ohio State players on Wednesday night. Garrett Wilson, wide receiver. Uh, heard lots of talk about the defense, but he said the offense really didn't hold up their end of the deal last weekend against Oregon either. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we started slow and we, we finished slow. So, um, I mean, you can say what you want about defense, but, you know, we had two chances to, you know, tie the game up. And then, you know, if we do what we do on the first drive, you know, take the, take the lead after they got those two stops, three stops, really, if you, th if you count the last drive. So, um, I mean, we don't feel like we did enough offense side. And, you know, we want to control what we can control. So, that's putting points on the board every every draw. The big question when a team has to respond to a loss is, what does it look like in practice the next week? Are they down? Are they moping? Are they angry? What, what do things actually look like on the practice field during the week? Here's what Garrett Wilson had to say. And then after Garrett, you'll hear from uh, offensive lineman Nick petit Fur answering the same question as well. Uh, I mean, today we, we've, we haven't had a better practice than today all year. Offensive, offensively, I would say, you know, they're trying to learn new things on the defense side. So that, that comes with, you know, a learning curve. But, I mean, the energy and just the attention to detail the last two days, I feel like it hasn't been like that, you know, this whole since since camp started. So, um, I mean, we, you know, we, we knew we had some problems. But, you know, when whenever you lose, you know, it magnifies them all. So, um, I mean, there's no room for, you know, messing up at practice anymore. I mean, if there was before, there's none at all now. 
You know, it's about the small details in practice for sure, but it's also just about the energy and the hunger that we have as a team, you know? Um, we had a lot of great energy today throughout almost the entire entirety of practice. You know, the offense was going at the defense, the defense went at the offense, and it was just great competition day. There's a lot of us just going at each other and great and good competition, like competition that made each of us better, that made us learn from if someone did this type of move, okay, well, how would I counteract that? And then we would go back at it again, and then the other guy would beat the other guy. It's just going back and forth with each other and just competing. So I would say that to Garrett's um, estimation that yes, it was a great day of practice, not only because of the small details that I talked about before, but also because of the juice and the energy we had as a team. The Buckeyes put up more than 600 yards of total offense against Oregon, but again, only 28 points. One of the big issues they had was they could get into Oregon territory. Sometimes they got into the red zone, but they weren't finishing drives consistently enough. Nick petit Ferrer says that was one of the things that just caught up with them against the Ducks. We got to put the ball in. You know, um, we take we take accountability for that all as a whole, you know, that we got to score. You know, that's something that we always talk about. That's one of our key tenets in our plan to win, that we got to score in the red zone. And um, when you don't score in the red zone, it's hard. And when you got to score touchdowns in the red zone, when you don't score touchdowns in the red zone, you know, it gives the other team an opportunity to make up that deficit that we could have made if we got six points and then got the extra point, which makes it seven. So we just got to put the ball in the end zone. But I, what I could say is that we all played hard. You know, we had a lot of effort. We had a lot of guys going out there, busting their butts every single play, as it could show that we had a lot of yards, but we just need to do the small things right to finish off drives and things like that. And finally, one of the stars of last weekend's game, whose performance got a little bit lost in uh, all the other news that, that came out of the game, uh, was punter Jesse Murko. He is a freshman out of Australia. He is uh, following in the shoes of Cam Johnson, who is, of course, a uh, very popular player on the national championship team in 2014, another Australian punter. Murko said that Johnston and his experience in Columbus helped inspire Murko to follow in his shoes and become a Buckeye. Obviously a lot like Cam's had a very successful career and still is having a good career. And um, the opportunity that comes with playing here and the exposure and whatnot obviously yeah, comes into play. And um, yeah, he, he did a lot here and had a great career here as well. So um, if I can get anywhere near Cam's career, I'll be pretty happy. So. Murko grew up playing Aussie rules football, not college football or NFL football, obviously. He, so he was asked, so this is, this is all kind of new to you. What was the big adjustment? Like what's been the biggest adjustment for you going from Aussie rules football to now college football games? Probably the length of the game. They've both been pretty long, um, especially when you're just standing there a lot of the day. Um, and a lot of the, like I hold as well. And a lot of our scores have been explosive, like big plays out of nowhere. So it's, yeah, you got to kind of be ready and uh, ready to go at any time, really. So probably that. Well, as we said off the top of the show, this is suddenly a much more intriguing game than it seemed like at the beginning of uh, perhaps the beginning of the season or over the summer when you were looking at the schedule. There is going to be a ton to talk about this weekend as the Buckeyes get ready to face Tulsa, which is a team that is better than you probably think they are. Don't. Don't just look at the helmets and the logo and say that's that's a 60 point win for Ohio State for sure. This is a better team than you think it is. And Ohio State's defense and Ohio State's offense have some questions they have to answer this week. So there is going to be some intrigue around this one that uh, you were probably not expecting earlier in the year. So a uh, fantastic place to uh, be a part of all of that intrigue and get answers to all of your questions is at BuckeyeScoop.com. Our fantastic team of insiders is working hard on our Ask the Insiders board to bring you all the information you want to know about what's going on inside the program what the Buckeyes are working on, changes that may be coming, and uh, what to expect on Saturday. That's all at BuckeyeScoop.com. Also, make sure you check out our YouTube channel at YouTube.com slash BuckeyeScoop. If you are watching on YouTube, hit the bell or hit the little Buckeye Scoop logo at the end of this video that will subscribe you to our channel. That'll, get, that'll make sure you get notified every time we post a new video. So every time we post a new podcast, interviews with players and coaches, pregame shows, postgame shows, any of that stuff. That's all at youtube.com slash Buckeye Scoop. You'll get notified every time we go live, every time we post a new video, so you never miss a thing. We will have pre- and post-game coverage on Saturday from Ohio Stadium for the Ohio State Tulsa game. Should be a lot of fun. Should be a fascinating Saturday. So uh, do make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Buckeye Scoop. And also subscribe to BuckeyeScoop.com as well for the very best coverage in the market. We have uh, a fantastic team of insiders that covers things from just about every possible angle. So again, BuckeyeScoop.com and YouTube.com slash Buckeye Scoop. That'll do it for today. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.